I've gotten a lot of requests on shirts and pants to the point where that is all I can think of so I had to make one. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If this is the first time you are seeing my face, my name is Amara and on this channel we make sewing tutorials, tips, DIYs, basically everything that will help you become good at sewing. This particular tutorial is going to be on this simple female shirt and don't worry the next tutorial coming after this is going to be on the pants. At this point I hope you have hit on your subscribe button and turn up your post notification because if you're interested in sewing you don't want to miss any of my tutorials. Now let's get right into making this beautiful shirt. With me here, I have this beautiful silky material which I'll be using to make this shirt and I have my drawing tools. Now let's get into the drafting of the pattern. On your pattern paper, the first thing you'll be doing is to come in by 2 inches from your center front and this is where your buttons are going to stay. Okay, so just mark 2 inches across your center front and rule a straight line across of that. To mark the starting line, just come down from your pattern paper from the top of your pattern paper by one inch and just mark that on both sides of your pattern paper and connect it with a straight line. This certain line you drew is going to serve as your shoulder line, okay? And from that shoulder line, you're going to mark other vertical measurements from the shoulder to your bust, to your shoulder to your waist and to the length of the top. Mark that on, on the other side of your pattern paper and rule a straight line to connect them together. For the length of my top, I'm going to be using the length of about 25 inches and I'm going to mark that on both sides and connect with a straight line. I'll just label all my lines, the shoulder line, the bust point, my waist and the length. Now we'll be placing the round body measurement on this line we've drafted. My shoulder is 17 divided by 2, I have 8.5 inches. And now I'm going to place my chest line which is approximately two inches above the pulse point or you divide your butts by six and add 1.5 for me i have about 8.2 when i do that so i'm just going to mark that on both sides and connect with a straight line like i just did so the next thing i'll be doing now is to mark my shoulder line divided by two on my chest line also connect these two points on the chest line and on the shoulder line with a straight line just like so the shoulder is not straight so to get our shoulder slope we are going to come in from the center front by three inches from that two inches buttonhole space we have there and then come down by one inch on the armhole line and we are going to connect this with a straight line this is going to serve as our shoulder slant and our new shoulder line after getting the shoulder slant, the next thing is to get your armhole curve. And from that one inch you came down by to the chest line, you're going to divide that by two. You can simply do that by folding your tape into two and marking the midpoint. Okay, so after marking the midpoint, because this is the front pattern, come in by half of an inch from that midpoint. Now on your chest line, you divide your bust measurement by four. Now, because this is a shirt and you don't want it to be exactly tight on your body, this material is not stretchy. So go ahead and add about 1 to 1 1.5 inches, however you please. Okay, now I'm going to connect that point from the chest line to the midpoint and into my slant just like so. Now, this is the armhole for the front. For the neckline, I'm going to come down there by 2.5 inches. And then I'm still going to be using the first three inches and I'm going to connect them together with a curve. And this is going to be serving as the neckline for our front pattern. To place your round body measurement, you'll be dividing your round body measurements by four. First of all, I'm just going to add a stitching allowance of one inch to my chest line. And what I have my chest line is exactly what I'm going to be marking on my bust point. So I won't bother with that. I'll just go directly to the waist. My waist is divided by 4 is 8 inches. Extra 1 inch for ease. That's going to be 9 inches. And 1 inch stitching allowance. I'll just connect the point on my chest line and on my waistline together with my marker. And also connect the stitching allowance with my pen. On the length of my shirt, I'm going to be marking my hip measurement divided by 4 and I'm going to add extra 1 inch to that and then I'm going to also add my stitching allowance to that which is 1 inch. 
now i'll connect what i have on my waist to the length of my shirt and also connect the allowance together i'll just outline the length of my shirt i'll add a half inch stitching allowance to the shoulder of my shirt and i'll connect that with a straight line just like you see me do just to go over this add half inch on your shoulder don't add to the armhole add to the side and then i'll also add to the hem of my shirt I'll be adding a half inch stitching allowance there also and I'll connect it with a straight line. I'll just label the allowances. This is 0.5 for the hem, 1 inch for the side, 2 inches for the button hole space. And I add a half inch to the shoulder part. After doing that, my front pattern is ready so I'll just go ahead and cut it. Be careful while cutting this out and do not forget to cut it along your allowance line for the places that have stitching allowance. This is my front pattern ready and I just wanted to say something that for those people that don't like their waist being covered this way, you can add extra 2 inches to whatever you get to your waist and that way it's not this curvy. It totally depends on what you want, okay? So it's really really malleable. I've gone ahead to put my fabric on fold using the measurement from my pattern so I'm just going to place the pattern on the fabric and I'll just cut that out. That's basically what I'm doing here. I just went ahead to pin down my pattern on my fabric so I'll just cut this out. After doing that, I'll just go ahead and cut my material through the middle because I cut this on fold and this bottom part is meant to be open and not closed so just cut through the middle and divide it into two after cutting it through the middle to create two front piece so this is what i have now so let's go ahead and drag the back pattern for the back pattern you won't be needing to come in by two inches because for a normal shirt there is no button at the back so the first thing you are going to do is to come down from the top of your pattern paper by about 2.5 inches mark that on both sides and rule a straight line across and this is because for a shirt you always add extra 2 inches or 1.5 inch to the shoulder part because the back part is supposed to be a bit longer than the front now after creating your shoulder line the next thing you are going to do is to mark your vertical measurements just exactly the way you did in front from the shoulder to bust point shoulder to waist your shoulder to your chest line and then shoulder to the length of the shirt mark that also on the other side of your pattern paper and then connect this with a straight line just to label this line so you guys can see i have my shoulder line i have my chest line there i have my bust point i have my waist and i have the length of my shirt just like i did in front i'm just going to place my measurements my shoulder divided by two i have 8.5 so i'll mark it there and i'll also mark the same thing on my chest line i'll connect this together with a straight line for the shoulder slope i'll come down the line i just created which is my armhole line by one inch and i'm going to come in from the center back by three inches i'm going to connect this with a straight line just like you see me doing to get my armhole curve for the back i'm going to place that on the one inch i came down by and find the middle of my line and i'm going to mark my bust point divided by four on my chest line and i'm going to connect this into the midpoint and into the one inch i came down by just like so for the neckline depth for the back, I'm going to come down by 1.5 inch and I'm going to connect it into the first 3 inches I already marked like so. Now I'll just go ahead and place my round body measurements and connect my lines together. My waist divided by 4 plus my stitching allowance and my hip divided by 4 plus my stitching allowance. Make sure you are using your own measurements. Okay, so now I'll just go ahead and connect it exactly the way I did for the front pattern. I'll just label how many inches I added to this pattern, 0.5 to the hem, 1 inch to the side, none to the armhole, and then half inch stitching allowance to the shoulder. Now I would have left it like this, but because this is a shirt, do not forget to add about 2.5 or 2 inches to the back of your pattern. This is because the back is meant to be longer than the front, okay? So just make sure you do that and connect with a straight line. With what I was trying to explain for the back part, this is what I'm trying I was trying to say. So the back part is meant to be longer because this is supposed to cover a little bit to the front. 
now i've gone ahead to put my material on fold and i'm just going to cut out my back piece i'll first of all pin this down then cut it out also make sure that you are putting this at the folded edge of your fabric because the back is meant to be together and not split into two after cutting it out this is what i have for the back piece now let's get right into the sewing i'll be starting with my front piece and i'm going to show you how to fold and create the button space so the first thing you do is to fold your fabric by half inch at the center front after folding it then you move in by about 1.5 inch there and then iron this down please make sure you watch this and understand what i'm really trying to say okay just to go over this again you first of all fold in your fabric from the center fold by half inch like that iron it all the way through and fold it again into about 1 or 1.5 inch i'm done ironing it here and this is what i have so this is what yours should look like now i'll go to my machine and stitch this down all the way through just like you see me describing with my hand after stitching this down this is what i had and as you can see the buttonhole space has been created and our shirt is already coming together a little tip always make sure you iron this out very well before stitching it down on your machine place your front piece and your back piece right sides facing each other just like you see me doing after doing that and arranging it properly you will just go ahead and stitch it down at the shoulders by half of an inch so i'll just go ahead and do that i'm done stitching it down by half of an inch at the shoulder and as you can see the back is coming a little bit to the front like it's kind of folding it to the front and that's how a shirt is meant to be okay the next thing to do is to measure what you have at the armhole together you're measuring everything and it's because the front and the back armhole is not the same the back armhole is quite longer and this is because we added extra inches as you can remember so just measure everything you have in total there and this is what we are going to use to cut it out here i have 24 inches and that divided by 2 is 12 so let's go and cut the sleeve of our shirt for the sleeve remember we measure 24 inches so what i have here is roughly about 12 inches and that is on fold okay so opening it up is going to be 24 and the length i use 23 inches the original length for my sleeve is about 26 inches but i removed two inches from my sleeve length and this is because i want to attach a cuff okay so i cut the cuff by five inches and put it on fold i went ahead to measure my round sleeve at the wrist and what i have there is about eight inches so these eight inches i added an extra 1.5 to cut out my cuff because i don't want to be short on fabric so there i have 9.5 now what i have here is roughly about 2.5 on fold and five inches when you open it up the extra half inch is for stitching it to the main sleeve okay so this is what i just went ahead to do to cut out my sleeve and to cut out the cuffs and this is what i have and also i cut two of my sleeves together and i put them together because i'll be cutting them together now the next thing i'm going to do is to come down by 4.5 inches from the top of my sleeve and that is going to serve as my bicep line i'm going to glue this with a straight line then from the center front of your sleeve you come in by 4.5 inches and then from that point to the bicep line you find the midpoint and you mark it just like so from this midpoint i'm going to form a curve towards the upper part and blend that into a downward curve towards this other side remember that when we measured the armhole i got 12 inches so i'm just going to make sure i have up to 12 inches there or if the curve is longer than 12 inches i'll just mark the point where the 12 inches top just like you see i've done on the fabric the next thing i'll be doing now is to measure the length of my sleeve and i'm going to be using about 23.5 inches i'm going to mark down on both sides and connect with a straight line i'm done drafting this sleeve so i'll just go ahead and cut this out and i know you might be wondering why my round sleeve on the lower part of my sleeve and the upper part is the same well this is because i want to create pleats but i also went ahead to reduce it by about two inches so i did that off camera because i didn't know my camera wasn't recording but i i just went ahead to cut out my sleeve first then i moved in two inches from the lower part after cutting out the sleeve i'm just going to notch the midpoint of my sleeves there 
to get the midpoint of where you are going to attach your sleeve on your shirt so what you need to do you iron out your shirt properly and make sure that the length of the front and the back are the same now as you can see you're not supposed to put it at the line where you join the front at the back at the shoulder after ironing it out this part that comes out as the middle with the line there as you can see mine is where it's going to be the midpoint okay and not the line you used in joining so now i'm going to bring in my sleeve and the middle point of my sleeve and the middle point i marked on my shirt are going to go together place them right side facing each other and go to your machine and stitch it down i'm just stitching down my sleeve to my shirt and this is how it looks so the next thing i'm going to do now is to attach the cuff to the sleeve for the cuff i'm going to turn it over to the wrong side and i'm going to stitch down the both sides by half of an inch and i'm going to turn this over and iron it out after doing that i'm going to be attaching the cuff to the sleeve and i'm going to just pleat it on the sleeve so basically what i'll be doing is to pleat my sleeve on my cuff after placing my sleeve on my cuff this is what i have and this is how beautiful it came out as you can see i pleated it a lot on my sleeve my sleeve was too wide and it came out with excess so i'm just going to trim down that excess as you see me doing after trimming out the excess this is what it looks like the next thing i'll be doing after that is to arrange my sleeve right sides facing each other and stitch it down by one inch from the sleeve all the way to the hem of my shirt just like i described and then i'll also hem my shirt so after doing that you, i didn't want my shirt to just be basic so i decided i was going to add slit to my shirt so i used about seven to eight inches for my slit and what i just did was to hem my shirt and then fold in by half inch and fold it again at the side to stitch down the slit just like you see me doing here just like that and i'll stitch it down on the machine and bring it back for you guys to see before i mentioned there was something i needed to do before that because my um shirt is quite curvy so i'm just going to trim out this down part that leads to my hip just so i get it to be straight a little straight because the way it is like this if i fold it in to sew it it might not come out really nice so i need to trim out that part so it becomes a bit straight and easier for me to stitch if yours is not curvy you might not need to do this but mine is and if yours is you might need to just trim it out a little just for it to be straight just like i'm doing right now after stitching it down you can see how beautiful my slits are looking okay they are straight and they are not having any bend 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 if i had sewn it that way it wouldn't have really come out nice so this is what i have i've gone ahead to fix my button holes the next thing we are going to concentrate on now is the color of the shirt and because i'm making a very simple shirt i'm just going to show you guys a really simple way to make a shirt color without having to stress too much the first thing i'll be doing is to take the measurement of what i have on my collar so i'm just going to measure that carefully and note down the measurement so here i have about 24.5 inches or thereabout so i've gone ahead to cut out my collar by 25 inches and this is because i'm stitching down the other both sides by approximately half of an inch so my collar doesn't look funny or shorter than the actual shirt collar so as you can see I have 25 inches here and for how long my color will be I use about four inches there so make sure you cut two pieces of this and to one piece you're going to iron and interface and to the other piece you will not the next thing you'll be doing is to place your colors right sides facing each other and after placing it and arranging it properly right sides facing each other you're going to stitch it down by half of an inch on this part on this two sides also but you're going to leave this other part open i'm done stitching down all the parts i went ahead to stitch and this part is open so you just notch all the sides you stitch down and turn the color over to the right side what i'm going to do now is i'm going to be attaching the collar to my shirt and as you can see i'm placing it right sides with each other okay i want the part of the interfacing to be the one at the outside 
parts of my shirt if you understand what i mean so i'm just going to go ahead and do that and this other part without the interfacing i'm going to fold it in by half of an inch and i'm going to iron that for ironing that by half of an inch as you can see this is what i have on the part without the interfacing so the part of the interfacing i'm going to attach to my shirt first and you can see i'm done attaching that to my shirt and this is what it looks like when i mentioned i wanted the part of the interfacing to be on the outer part yeah as you can see it's on the outer part of my shirt and the other side is inside so i'm just going to put that folding that i have there in between the first stitch i made and i'm going to go over to my machine using the stitch in the ditch method and i'm going to stitch that down after stitching down the collar this is what it looks like now my collar is finished and this is how neat it looks i'm just going to go ahead and arrange my shirt together after doing that i'm just going to fix my buttons iron on my shirt and it will be ready this is what i have after doing all what i just mentioned as you can see my collar is popping and the shirt is looking very nice and also do not forget to add buttons at the cuff now i'm just going to go ahead and try it out for you guys to see i'm not even going to lie i rocked this shirt and pound to work the next day because it was just looking so classy and i couldn't just wait but to rock it if you haven't subscribed to my channel this is the right time to hit on that subscribe button and do not forget to turn on your post notifications so you get notified whenever i make new videos if this was really helpful do not forget to share with family and friends i'm going to see you guys in my next tutorial which is going to be on this beautiful pants i'm wearing bye